Hello, my name is Dr. Steve Edelson, and I'm the Executive Director of the Autism Research Institute located in San Diego, California in the United States. I was invited to be the editor of a special issue for the journal titled Autism and Developmental Disorders Russia. In this issue, several speakers from this year's Autism Challenges and Solutions annual conference were invited to write a paper similar to their online presentation. I must say that it was a pleasure to collaborate with the journal's editor and administrative staff. We work closely on all phases of the publication. In this special issue, I interviewed Temple Grandin about many issues, including what she is doing during this COVID year, about teaching children at home these days, about teaching driving skills, and much more. I have been a good friend of Temple Grandin for over 40 years, and we have always had enlightening conversations about autism whenever we would get together. The special issue also contains an important article written by Dr. Margaret Bauman, a well-established medical researcher. In her paper, Dr. Bauman describes the latter's approach, which is an internationally recognized multidisciplinary treatment program. This is the first time she has written extensively about this treatment program. Another exciting article was written by Dr. Robert Hendren and his colleagues Rachel Saipan and China Parental. Dr. Hendren, a highly respected and well-published psychiatrist, teaches at the University of California at San Francisco. He was also the first director of the Mind Institute, one of the leading autism research centers in the world. The article provides an insightful summary of many research issues related to autism, including genetics, risks, prevention, interventions, employment, and autism in older adults. Another excellent paper was written by Dr. David Nicholas. Dr. Nicholas is a professor at the University of Toronto, and he discusses a wide range of supportive employment programs. In another article on autism and employment, Dr. Darren Headley and his colleagues, Simon Burry and Jennifer Spohr, describe a one-year study in which they investigated job satisfaction and quality of life. Although the results were not significant, and based on these results, the authors make recommendations on how best to improve employment programs and provide much needed support to those on the autism spectrum. In another article, Dr. L. Azari sets forth a hypothesis in which glutamate levels could possibly normalize, that is reduce, by providing a combination of nutrition-based treatments. I also wrote a summary overview of different treatment approaches often used to treat anxiety, self-harming behavior, and sleep disturbances. These approaches include biomedical, nutritional, sensory, and behavioral. Again, I'd like to thank the editor and the administrative staff at the journal Autism and Development Disorders Russia. These articles were translated into both Russian and English and are available online to the autism community as well as the general public. Thank you.